In a bustling city known for its vibrant culture and diversity, the Grand Elegance Hotel stood tall, its opulence attracting guests from all walks of life. It was a place where people came to celebrate special moments, create memories, and indulge in the finest cuisine. However, not all who entered its doors were met with the same respect and dignity. One fateful evening, an elderly black woman named Clara Johnson would discover just how deeply ingrained prejudice could cut. Little did the white waiter who dismissed her know, the night would unravel in ways he could never have imagined, revealing the true power of love, family, and the harsh consequences of discrimination. Welcome back to Anecdote Odyssey, a place where we explore humanity through personal stories by converting journeys into collections of interesting personal stories. Hit the subscribe button and get to experience endless intriguing stories. Clara Johnson, a spirited 65-year-old woman, was filled with excitement as she prepared for her birthday celebration. Her son, Marcus, had gone above and beyond to organize a surprise party at the Grand Elegance Hotel, a place he had frequented as a child, where he often dreamed of making a name for himself. As Clara donned her favorite blue dress, she reminisced about the past, the laughter of her children, and the love that surrounded her family. This year, her heart swelled with pride as she thought of Marcus, now a successful entrepreneur who owned the very hotel she was about to visit. Arriving at the Grand Elegance, Clara marveled at the luxurious surroundings. The golden chandeliers sparkled overhead, and the rich aroma of gourmet food wafted through the air. As she entered the restaurant, a wave of nostalgia washed over her. She had come here many times with Marcus when he was younger, always dreaming of one day owning such a beautiful establishment. Happy birthday, Mom! Marcus greeted her with a warm embrace. He was impeccably dressed, a reflection of the success he had achieved. Clara felt an overwhelming sense of joy, surrounded by family and friends who had gathered to celebrate her milestone. They laughed, shared stories, and raised glasses filled with bubbly champagne, filling the air with warmth and love. As the night progressed, Clara decided to take a moment to herself. She stepped away from the crowd to explore the lavish hotel, admiring the artwork and intricate decor. The atmosphere was perfect, and her heart swelled with happiness. However, her bliss was soon shattered when she attempted to place an order at the bar. A young white waiter, Jake, approached her with an air of superiority. He glanced at Clara and immediately made a judgment based solely on her appearance. Can I help you? He asked, his tone dripping with condescension. Clara, undeterred by his attitude, smiled warmly. Yes, please. I'd like a glass of red wine. Jake's expression hardened as he looked her up and down. We don't serve your kind here. You should probably find a seat at the back where you belong, he sneered. Stunned, Clara's smile faltered. She felt a rush of humiliation wash over her as she realized she was being dismissed simply because of the color of her skin. I'm sorry, but I am a paying customer, she replied. Her voice steady despite the sting of his words. Jake leaned closer, his voice low but laced with disdain. We have standards here. Why don't you just leave before I have to call security? Clara's heart sank. She was not just a customer. She was a woman with a lifetime of experiences a mother, a grandmother, and a successful career behind her. But at that moment, all she felt was the weight of prejudice bearing down on her. Just as Clara was about to respond, Marcus appeared, noticing his mother's distress. What's going on? He asked, concern etched across his face. Clara looked at her son, and the hurt in her eyes told him everything. This waiter, she began, but before she could finish, Marcus stepped forward, anger flaring in his chest. Hey, how dare you speak to my mother like that? Marcus confronted Jake, his voice booming through the restaurant. The atmosphere shifted as other diners turned to watch, tension filling the air. She doesn't belong here. Man, Jake replied, attempting to shrug off the confrontation. But his bravado was waning as he recognized Marcus's intensity. Marcus's face was flushed with anger. You have no idea who you're talking to. My mother is a valued guest, and you will treat her with respect. Jake rolled his eyes, attempting to maintain his facade of indifference, 
but Clara could see the fear creeping in behind his bravado. Let's go, Mom, Marcus said, guiding her away from the bar. But Clara shook her head. No, I won't let this stand. It's my birthday, and I deserve to be treated with dignity, she said, her voice firm. Marcus nodded, realizing the importance of the moment. I'll handle this. Marcus marched back to Jake, who had returned to wiping down the bar, clearly trying to avoid any further confrontation. I want to speak to the manager, Marcus demanded. Yeah, sure. Whatever, Jake muttered, his disinterest palpable. Now, Marcus's voice echoed, sending a ripple of unease through the restaurant. After a few moments, the manager, a distinguished man in his fifties named Mr. Thompson, arrived. What seems to be the issue? He asked, looking from Marcus to Jake. This waiter just insulted my mother, Marcus replied, pointing at Jake. He treated her like she was less than human because of her skin color. Mr. Thompson's brow furrowed, glancing at Jake, who had gone pale. Is that true? Jake stammered, I, uh, I didn't mean, didn't mean what? To disrespect her? To embarrass her on her birthday? You don't get to decide who deserves to be treated with respect. Marcus said, his voice rising. Mr. Thompson, sensing the gravity of the situation, looked between the two men. I take matters of discrimination very seriously. Jake, I'm afraid you'll need to step into my office. Panic filled Jake's eyes as he realized the severity of what was happening. I didn't mean any harm, he protested weakly. You'll have to explain that to HR, Mr. Thompson replied sternly, leading Jake away from the scene. As the tension in the restaurant dissipated, Clara felt a sense of relief wash over her. She was grateful for Marcus's protection, but her heart ached for the reality of what had just occurred. Mom, I'm so sorry you had to experience that, Marcus said, returning to her side. Clara shook her head, a gentle smile returning to her face. It's okay, sweetheart. I faced prejudice before. It's disheartening, but we have to keep pushing forward. This doesn't define us. Just then, Mr. Thompson returned, his demeanor more serious than before. Clara, Marcus, I'm truly sorry for what just happened. We do not tolerate discrimination in any form here at the Grand Elegance. And I assure you that Jake will face serious consequences. Marcus nodded, appreciating the manager's prompt action. Thank you for handling it. I'd like to offer you both a complimentary meal tonight as an apology for this unfortunate incident. Mr. Thompson continued, his expression sincere. And I'll personally make sure your birthday celebration is memorable. Clara's heart warmed at his kindness. Thank you, that's very generous of you, she replied, her voice steady. Meanwhile, Jake was facing the consequences of his actions in the back office. Mr. Thompson had called HR, and an investigation into Jake's behavior was underway. I can't believe you'd treat a guest like that. Jake, Mr. Thompson reprimanded. Do you have any idea who she is? Just some old lady, right? Jake scoffed, attempting to shrug off the seriousness of the matter. Not just some old lady, Mr. Thompson snapped back. That woman is the mother of the owner of this hotel. You've not only disrespected her, but you've also brought shame to this establishment. Your behavior will not be tolerated. Jake's bravado faded as the weight of the situation began to sink in. I'm sorry. I didn't know. That's the problem, Jake. You didn't bother to find out, Mr. Thompson replied, shaking his head in disappointment. You'll be suspended indefinitely, and I'll recommend termination if your actions are found to be deliberate. Back in the restaurant, Clara and Marcus were enjoying a delightful meal, surrounded by family and friends who had gathered to celebrate Clara's birthday. Laughter and joy filled the room, overshadowing the earlier incident. Mom, I'm so glad we chose this place, Marcus said raising a glass and toast. To you, and to many more birthdays. Clara smiled, her heart full as she looked around the table. To family and love, she replied, her eyes sparkling with happiness. As the evening wore on, a small cake adorned with candles was brought to the table. The room sang in unison, celebrating Clara's life and the legacy she had built for her family. A few days later, Jake received a letter from the hotel management informing him of his suspension. 
The weight of his actions pressed down on him as he realized the depth of his mistake. He had acted on prejudice without understanding the consequences of his words and behavior. With time for reflection, Jake began to understand that his actions had hurt more than just Clara. They had the potential to tarnish the reputation of an establishment built on inclusion and respect. He reached out to his boss, requesting to meet with Clara to apologize, hoping to learn from his mistakes. Clara was hesitant when she received the request, but Marcus encouraged her to meet with Jake. It might help him learn, he said. Everyone makes mistakes. It's how we grow. Reluctantly, Clara agreed. She met with Jake at a coffee shop, where he expressed his remorse and offered a sincere apology. I was wrong, he said. His voice filled with regret. I let my prejudice cloud my judgment, and I'm truly sorry for the pain I caused you. Clara listened, and after a moment, she spoke. We all have to learn, Jake. What matters is how you choose to move forward. I hope you can use this experience to grow and change. Jake nodded, grateful for her understanding. I promise to do better, he said, tears in his eyes. Thank you for giving me this chance. The incident became a catalyst for change at the Grand Elegance Hotel. Mr. Thompson implemented mandatory diversity training for all staff, ensuring that everyone learned to treat guests with the respect they deserved, regardless of their background. Clara's story served as a powerful reminder of the importance of dignity and inclusion in a world that often overlooked these values. As for Clara, she continued to celebrate her birthdays with family and friends, each year more vibrant than the last. She cherished the lessons learned, understanding that love and forgiveness could heal even the deepest wounds. Jake, on the other hand, became an advocate for diversity training in the hospitality industry, sharing his story of redemption and the lessons he had learned. He often spoke at seminars and workshops, encouraging others to challenge their biases and strive for a more inclusive world. In the end, the experience forged a bond between Clara and Jake, reminding them both of the importance of understanding and compassion. The price of prejudice was steep, but through forgiveness and growth, they found a path toward healing and a better future for everyone. If you found this story educative and powerful, give it a like and subscribe to this channel for more interesting real-life personal stories.